New year and new goals. What to expect as we approach the state of the city? And how can you interact with the city council when you have a strong feeling towards local policy? Plus, how did the public library persevere during a pandemic? We talked to library director Janet Anderson on how she managed to be the only library in the state to stay open. We'll cover all of that this week ahead. Hey everyone, welcome in and thanks for joining me once again on This Week Ahead. An email dropped into my mailbox this week asking how to address the council on a specific topic. I found this to be a nice moment to answer that broadly for you because there is on every council agenda a section reserved for exactly that. It's called personal appearances. This is for personal appearances. This is an opportunity for anyone to come forward and speak on any item that is either on or not on our agenda. We've seen this work in the past for many people that didn't know where else to go about an issue. One nice lady just wanted to resolve a zoning, a zoning error on her property. What I'm here to ask tonight is where are we at on it? How's it going? Are we looking into it? Did I get put under the rug or what? Well, first, Ms. Ms. Otto, thank you for taking the time um, and, and um, staying here to get your questions asked. I'm going to ask Mr. Billingsley to actually come forward and answer your question for you. Helen brought up her issue and she was related to a staff member to help find a solution for her. Another instance was several years ago. There was a call for action on a growing local and national addiction crisis. Talk about the opioid roundtable that Senator Heidkamp had. And we got information from Fargo for their Blue Ribbon Council. And we just wanted to kind of check in and say, so what's the plan? What came of it was the Mayor's Committee on Addiction. We see this work often, governing on behalf of the people live on the spot. Some of the most engaging and productive conversations come from this one specific agenda item. But I want you to know that's not the only way. While very effective, it's not always the most efficient either. Governing at the council meetings is typically the final step of the process in most cases. You're always better off trying to engage your council members individually, one-on-one -on -one first. I can't speak to their preferences, but I can say that it's a chance to be more detailed. There is a page on the city's website that will help you connect with your council members. You can, of course, also use the council comment portal online as well. Many of you do know this. I heard about the intense volume of communication to council members about the mask mandate, but I still find it important to outline options for you, just in case something comes up. At the very least, it's something to keep in mind this week ahead. Also this week ahead, Binex rapid COVID-19 screening continues at Fire Station 1. We've been working on perfecting the hours to best serve the community's need and the appetite for rapid screening. There's been a steady decrease in demand in tests over three weeks. We've seen the hours of operation reflect that. What isn't going down is the number of positives those rapid tests are finding, at least from a percentage. 9%, 8%, and 11% respectively through three weeks. By the end of next week, it'll mark a full month. We'll continue to adjust our hours as needed, but for now, we'll continue that service on Monday from eight to two, two to seven on Tuesday. There will be no screening on Wednesday. Thursday will be two to seven, Friday, eight to two. Saturday will be 10 to two with no screening on Sunday. We're nearing the State of the City virtual event hosted by Mayor Sean Sitmo. This is mostly a save the date reminder for all of you that he will be live Tuesday, February 2nd. You'll obviously reflect on 2020, but will, it will also be about 2021. The challenges ahead, the goals for the city, and the vision that he sees for the upcoming year. Make sure you join us February 2nd on all of your favorite social media platforms. You can find us at City of Minot. All right, let's do our own reflection of 2020 for just a minute. The pandemic changed so much of our lives. Some felt that impact much more than others. Probably our most outward facing facility and department for the city of Minot is the Minot Public Library. 
It's a place for learning, reading, exploring, and so much more. The services that they offer are vast. I've long said it's perhaps one of our most underutilized services as a city. Those services were put to the test this past year, and they still are being tested. It took quick thinking and creative problem solving, but Minot managed to be the only community in the state that never once shut down its public library services. A feat that is a point of pride for my guest today. Library director, problem solver, community liaison, and a game changer finalist, Janet Anderson, joins me now to talk about the plight of a librarian in 2020 and things we can look forward to this week ahead. Janet, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Derek. Thanks for including us. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Janet, first I want to mention that after weeks of limiting indoor service, the library just this week is starting to open up just a little bit more. You're back to seven days a week, if I'm not mistaken. Um, six days a week. Six days, excuse me. But while you limited facility hours for some time, the library never really stopped service to the community. Can you tell us how you and your staff sort of managed to find ways to keep on keeping on? Absolutely. Um, and it was a struggle as a challenge for everyone, but on March 15th, we were told we needed to close the library building um, same day that the schools across the state closed. And by later that day, we had rolled out a curbside pickup program. Um, our staff has been amazing with rolling with these punches and pivoting to what the needs are, which are constantly changing. So we moved a lot to curbside. Uh, we started out with maybe one or two days a week, and now we are still continuing with curbside and we're doing it six days a week. We've also moved all of our in-person programming had to be canceled. And so now we're doing virtual programming and take and make programs. It's been pretty spectacular to to explore some of these new options. Now, I have to say, as a father that served two stints working from home with a toddler, the library came up big when I when it came to trying to manage life as a dad and and life as an employee from story time to craft projects. Did you see a continued demand in services throughout the pandemic thus far? Oh, definitely. Uh, we have seen when we first rolled out curbside that first week, it was dozens and dozens of cars coming through every day um, to the point where we had to put it on hold for a bit and reassess how we could do this in a manageable way. Um, so that has continued to be on our priorities of things to keep. But virtual programming also, as we got into this and, and we still take breaks and, you know, there was a, a break around the holidays and, and people were asking for it and people were wanting it. And you think about pre-pandemic and, and there are certain things that we're wondering, why didn't we do this before? Why? Why didn't we have some online programming for those families who maybe can't get all their kids to the library in time for story time? Um, or why aren't we providing more of these take and make programs so that adults or teens who want to create, but maybe don't or can't make the time that we have scheduled can still follow along. So like I said, it's really been a great opportunity for us to explore new areas that will continue. So on a personal review note, uh, my daughter and I tried one of your take and make um, programs. The slime making kit with Randy, I still get repeated requests for that. So is that coming back? I, I got a four year old to report back to on this. You know, I don't know. I did that one myself, too. I had three kids with me and boy, I mean, we had glue all over our hands. It was mm -hmm. crazy, but they still they talk about it. This um this particular week, um, and there will maybe still be some kits available if anyone calls, but we did a stained glass um, Chagall inspired art piece and there's black glue in that. So that was kind of a fun, uh, fun thing. I don't know if slime itself will be coming back, but we are big on steam activities. So teaching kids about you know, it, it's not just glue. You can add these activators and what happens when you have colored versus uh, white glue. So it's it's really a, a creative and kind of sneaky way to get them to, to learn and take interest in some of these areas. Yeah, and I will attest to that. It, it was uh, it was a needed um, moment of 
harnessing a lot of pent up energy from being indoors uh, that that actually transpired. And, and you have a lot of those projects. But you also have something going on now that people might want to take advantage of. We are in the throes of winter and, and you are in the middle of a winter reading challenge. Tell us about that. And more importantly, tell us how we can win stuff, Janet. Oh my gosh, this has been one of the greatest things that our staff have worked on and it's it's new. It's the first time we've ever done this. A lot of people are familiar with summer reading program and of course this summer things looked different. Uh, we were very, very fortunate that pre pandemic our friends of the library group, which is a nonprofit group that raises money for our library, purchased a subscription to an online app called Beanstack and that allowed people to do all of summer reading online through an app. Um, we decided since we had this, we should do this through the winter. So we started it in October and it goes all the way through March and it's for all ages. We have it divided into four age groups. There's basically preschool level, elementary, teen and adult and super simple, but you do have to kind of read outside your comfort zone. So every month there's a new genre that we put up. For January, the genre is own voice, which is a really interesting and kind of new trend um, in a lot of media, but basically it means that a story, a fictional story is coming from the author's own voice. So from their cultural perspective. So I'm reading a Louise Erdrich book. Um, she's a very well-known Native American author from North Dakota, and she's writing about a, a group of fictional characters in the North Dakota area. So it's a way to introduce people hopefully into some new subjects, some new authors. February, uh, we're kind of alternating a little bit challenging between easier. So this, this month is a little bit of a challenge with own voice. Next month is biography. So super, I mean, we have thousands of books uh, available and you don't have to read books from the library. We'd love if you would, but if you have uh, Roosevelt biography at home that you have been meaning to read or the latest Jessica Simpson, go ahead and read it and log it. We will make sure it counts. So everyone who logs their books through the app that month gets entered into a drawing. So every month we're giving away four $25 gift cards to local businesses and they're age appropriate. So the adults may win a $25 gift card to Starving Rooster and the teens and uh, younger kids may win a $25 gift card to Escape Point. We have some Roosevelt Park uh, Zoo passes that will be coming up and then every person who participates for at least three months. So if people haven't started yet, they still could do this month and do three months. We'll get entered into a final grand prize drawing for a Kindle Fire. And we still have time to get all that reading in. Absolutely, you have till March. So get those own voice books. We have some great recommendations. And you know, again, it's for all ages. There's some really, really wonderful children's books out there um, that introduce kids to, to different cultures. And since it's coming from that author's perspective, you know that this is, is a very honest way to approach the subject. And once again, that app is called Bean Sprout, right? Bean Stack. Green stack. Green that's why. Stack. That's why you're here. Keep me on. <laughs> keep me on the straight and narrow. That's twice now. Uh, what else does the li the public library have coming up, Janet? We're continuing with our virtual programming. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10:30 a.m. on Facebook Live, we have Miss Casey doing story time for the younger kids. Each Monday, she demonstrates a craft for those kids, and they're available to be picked up outside the library we have a specially made box for these kids to pick up their craft kits and they can do that starting friday all the way through the end of the week we have um, also coming up our teen librarians have been doing some really great stuff they're still doing 3d printing tutorials and crafts but this week is one of their virtual kitchens so this coming thursday you can join pam and jess and they're going to show teens how to make blueberry pancakes um, unfortunately you can't taste them but i heard they were pretty good so we haven't yet found that uh, virtual tasting technology but soon to a library near you i hope maybe yeah. one day uh finally any recommendations of other books that maybe we should start reading what are you reading right now is it is it it's not just i know it's not just the one book you already mentioned 
You know, it is a little tough to get just one and um, with kids, we read aloud a lot with our kids. So my daughter and I are reading the, the newest book in the Hunger Games series, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. It's kind of a prequel. Um, and my son and I are reading the fourth in the Giver Quartet by Lois Lowry called Sun. Um, I started a nonfiction book that's very interesting, recommended by a friend of mine. Um, it's called Breath, and it's all about um, how we take breathing for granted and how the health benefits of breathing correctly can really help people. It's I'm seriously less than a chapter into it, and I'm already fascinated. And I'm not normally big on the nonfiction, so we'll see. Uh, nonfiction's my bread and butter, so I'm going to put that one kind of in the queue. That's where really? I'm going to go with. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, it's really helpful with the um, my, public my nuts, uh, public libraries um, audio app, um, the Libby app. I get a lot of audio books um, that help me get through a lot of those nonfiction books as well. All right, thanks, Janet. That's Janet Anderson at the Minot Public Library. Again, library cards can open up a whole world of education and entertainment, even during a world-stopping pandemic. Again, I use mine mostly for audio books, and my daughter very much digs on those digs those hand-on projects that you guys have with your programs. So, thanks again for your time, Janet. Thanks. I want to take a quick moment to let you know that. This is only one platform you can get this type of information. As of right now, you can go ahead and get this as a written email sent right to your inbox. Sign up for this newsletter this week ahead at minutnd.org slash this week ahead. Of course, you can also subscribe to our podcast version on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. But for now, that'll do it as we move forward with this week ahead. Consider this another reminder to send us questions through our mailbag. Whatever you want to know, we'll work to get you an answer right here. You can visit minutnd.org slash mailbag or just email directly to info at minutnd.org using the subject line of mailbag. We'll do our very best to answer any questions you may have about your city or your government as a whole, locally anyway. Thanks for joining me and enjoy this week ahead. <laughs>